I am so excited to announce the 2020 Energy Intensive with me, Crystal Ann Compton, and my partner, Trisha Carr. The Energy Intensive is an eight-week comprehensive program that teaches and activates energy healing modalities. This program is unique. It is brand new and it's cutting edge. It's also perfect for anyone interested in healing and in energy and in particular for intuitive people, for metaphysical seekers and for spiritual practitioners. To learn more about the 2020 Energy Intensive, click the link in the description box below. So let's start, Trisha and everybody. Let's start by talking about, we're not going to go into the details and we're not going to go into the sides and everybody's perceptions at this time because we all kind of know what that is. And again, the Lightworkers Lab is kind of a safe space from the, tor- the, the tumult and the turmoil of all of that. But nonetheless, I know we're all feeling it and it's showing up for me in the form of anxiety and what happens what I'm, what I'm prone to and what's being amplified right now for me is waking up in the middle of the night. Like if I happen to wake up in the middle of the night, the first thing I think about <clears throat> is what's going on in the world and that'll just keep me up for hours and I will feel just the tightness in the chest. I'll feel kind of a cold dread <clears throat> and that's when it's the most acute because I am alone with my thoughts and I have to manage and deal with them. But during the day, they also show up. It shows up as anxiety. But for me, I know this is going to shock you. I get really irritable. Like I just, I can't take another goddamn thing. I can't (laughs) have another person say another thing. I get really irritable and my expression is not generous and kind and loving as, as I know that I want to be. So that's just me. I don't know how, if it is showing up for you, Tricia, if so, maybe so you can, maybe you can tell us how, but do you have, can you first start by telling us why we, why this happens in the physical body and in the emotions, like why we experience it this way and maybe some other ways that it might be showing up so that we all understand? Yes. So why this happens is that the conscious mind is just 12 percent of your mind and the subconscious mind is 88 percent of your mind and there is a division between the conscious and subconscious mind called the critical mind or the critical layer of the mind and what happens is that critical mind is actually if you can picture a sphere i've done this on my channel before i've done this in my self-hypnosis classes picture a sphere picture 88 percent of it is subconscious and then there's a section here that is what is the critical layer or filter and then this part is your conscious mind the conscious mind is in charge of willpower decision making analysis and logic but it is not in charge of choice meaning holistic choice all of those things i mentioned decision making is basically from weighing things that have already been and then making a and then being able to make a decision so um i'm lactose intolerant i do not choose that that's not even a choice that's just you know it's just logic the subconscious mind is involved where when we are doing whole choice holistic choice subconscious mind is also the intuitive mind and it is the spiritual mind and the subconscious mind is is called the subconscious mind because we're not always aware of it now the thing is that when we pop into that anxiety or in the the physical body or the emotions it's when we have an overload of information or what we call message units all different think of every little thing that could be input it could be the light it could be the news it could be a request anything that can be considered an isolated piece of information it's a it's a unit of message And when we get too many of those into the conscious mind, the critical mind gives up and we escape into the subconscious mind, not in the positive way, like with meditation or hypnosis, where we actually are doing it with will, with like our choice and in a way to have focus and to get in there and explore. But what we're doing is going into an unconscious state. And so this is what basically what the highly sensitive person or the empath is experiencing when they feel like they're picking up, they're soaking things up or what Crystal is describing. So you're in a state of hypnosis, but not the positive kind. You're in an unconscious state. When you have too many message units coming into your conscious mind, critical mind gives up, 
escape into the subconscious mind, but this is not the positive way. And so it's now that your mind and all of those thoughts and all of the things that you've been picking up are running you and you are identified with those thoughts. And it shows up in, when you say in the emotions and in the body, we just have different ways that we receive information and we may be more emphasis of literally pulling information in with the physical body and feeling our emotions with our body or more of the intellectual input and everybody has a mix of all of it but that's why it shows up either in the mind and the intellect or in the physical body and the tension um, and we're all experiencing all of it many people are actually half and half and so they're pretty overloaded in the physical body and in the intellectual part of the mind when we're in that state so that's what is happening and that's why it happens to you in the middle of the night because as we know when we're in into and coming out of sleep we're in hypnosis we're in the interbetween and that's the state of somnambulism so the the energetic atmosphere the thought atmosphere all of the message units that got built up in the conscious mind boom activated because you're already vulnerable in that state so that's why it happens. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, you're, I'm thinking about all of the message units and there, uh, there's the message units that are common to our lives that are typical to our lives. And then there's all of this extraordinary yeah. messaging that's going on. I'm wondering, <laughs> it, it, like, I don't even want to say, it. like in the physical body, there feels like a density sometimes to me. And it's, <laughs> I feel like, I'm um, having a harder time moving things through. Let's just put it that way. I'm having a harder time sleeping mm -hmm. and I'm having a harder time just moving things through as if um, there's just so much to process. And to me, it's interesting that it's showing up in my thinking mind in this way. And, and truly I am doing the management necessary to observe what I'm thinking and to regulate myself. Although this can be more difficult, especially when conditions are acute, but it's also showing up in my physical body again, with a sleep and, and so, like with constipation. I don't even know if that's normal, but I'm like, is this my sensitivity and uh, affecting and impacting my system? Because of course it's all interrelated. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is personally for me. And I don't know if anybody out there is experiencing just kind of this processing, this digestive, not just constipation, but just like a roiling in the stomach, just like a lot going on in the physical body to process stuff that mirrors what's happening out there in the energetics. Am I is that possible? 100%. Well, I told you, yeah, I, I, I'm having a lot of issues with my gut right now. And, it, and I actually feel better right now, but this morning for, for the last day and a half, um, I was very inflamed in my gut and I'm actually eating incredibly cleanly right now. So it doesn't make any sense in that regard as to what I brought in so far as the foodstuffs is confirmed, concerned. But yeah, if we're talking about something like constipation, it isn't safe to live. It isn't safe to survive. You know, that's what the root chakra is all about. Um, and it's, I'm having issues in the sacral and the solar plexus that are showing up in my physical body. And yeah, that's it's all of the lower chakras are very con concerned, confused, uh, stricken by what's going on. I mean, how many days have we heard that those that man's words, his dying words? You know, that's hard. And we all lived that mm -hmm. vicariously and we all experienced it. It was interesting when Berwin was talking to us, how he said he, he sensed the emanation. He sensed it going out into the world. Yes. It, was, it was an off-gassing, if you will. And it's something that we in turn all took in, you know, and we're all dealing with it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's important to be watchful and mindful of what, all of the systems are doing the body, the mind, and the spirit. And I, I would consider these three separate systems, but they make up the whole and they are interconnected and interrelated. And so if you're experiencing struggle in your physical body right now, it could be because maybe the energetic part isn't being managed in the way that it needs to, or just maybe a little more attention to the way that you're taking in energy and how are you taking in energy, putting yourself on an info diet, like 
I think there's a lot of people too who feel like, well, it is my responsibility to know exactly what's happening out there. And I would just like to offer that, no, it is not. It is your responsibility to make sure that you are centered and aligned in your peace. And if Mm -hmm. something knocks you off that center, even if it's um, information and gathering that information, then you need to prioritize your center because when we're knocked off the center, And when we're out of alignment, when I'm snapping at people or when I'm cranky or when I'm deep in my anxiety, I am less useful in terms of my being. I am less useful. I'm not here to really occupy and express love to the fullest. And that's what I, that's what I want to do right now. I really want to express love and kindness and peace right now. I want to be the change that I seek to see in the world. I think we all do. So being mindful of just little things like, oh, I can't poop today, or it's harder for me to poop today, or how come I'm waking up in the middle of the night, or how come my heart is palpitating or palpitating? palpitating, palpitate. You know what I'm saying? How come my heart is skipping a beat or rushing? Or how come I'm feeling these rushes of energy in my body? It's so easy for us to just notice it and keep it moving, keep it pushing. But I would say like, let's pay attention to that because the body is always talking. The body is trying to communicate with you. And when we are off center, the body is the body and the emotion they're very loud trying to tell us, hey, 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 get back into alignment. Hey, get back into your I am, because that's where you are most powerful and most effective. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything with that information, being informed about what's going on if you are out of alignment. And so when Crystal says, it's not your job to be informed about everything to the minute, I think that sometimes when people re- react to that and they think, oh, you're spiritual bypassing and you want to put your head in the sand. No, what we're talking about is you don't have, there's probably, you could probably cut um, seven, not necessarily everyone, but some people could cut 70% out of their exposure because a lot of it is repetitive anyway. And a lot of it is co- is commercial fat. So we're not, we're not saying don't be informed. We're saying that I'm saying at least possibly a lot of some of us, how the information that's coming is not information. It is just message units. And you do want to be careful, be careful, mindful, and actually responsible about how you inform yourself. So really stay away from commercial news outlets. You know, any of the ones that have, that have the, the, uh, whether it's MSNBC, Fox, or any commercial or anything on social media, you got to be careful because the things that like, things that come through on on Facebook, those are driven by ads. The algorithm is driven by money making, and so there those those are individuals who are making money off of frightening us. And so be be responsible about how you receive it. Receive a a healthy, nutritious source of information. So really, look to public news sources. Look to also maybe dialing in how you receive the message units that come along with your news sources so what i mean by that is if you watch at the seven o'clock news you've got the stimulation of sound of light of um if the the emotions that are coming at you that's too much all of those things count and they they build up the overwhelm and create the hypnotic state that is the the negative one so maybe read an article from a public news source or listen to NPR on the radio because you're going to be t- dialing down some of the stimulus and that and that's a, will make a big difference. It sounds really simple, but it's really important. And also you can probably listen or watch or what a read once a day or at most bookend your day with it. That's probably fine. If there's an emergency, you will be. And then above all, I say, so that's like the practical thing. But I honestly, I you can also like pray over it and say, may I be properly informed without my seeking it all the time and, and just allow synchronicity to bring it to you as well. Now I do both, be responsible, but also be uh, connected and let spirit bring it to you. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Really seek out public news sources. It's so important. That's, that's, that's the thing I kind of want to touch on is be mindful, be judicious about the sources of your information. Don't just like be turning on Twitter and be like, what's on the front page? That's a toxic waste pile of awfulness. <laughs> like don't, don't do it. Like try to be mindful of who's offering the information and try to get as much 
um, editorializing, to me, editorializing away just kind of the information, the facts as they stand. And also, you know, you, I believe you can trust, I think this conversation is fire. Let me just say that. But um, this is so important. But I think you can trust your energy too. Like energy, commu- energy is always talking to energy. The energy of what is happening is talking to the energy of who it is that you are. And I trust spirit to energetically transmit to me or give me the information that I need that I'm not thinkingly mulling over or getting all manic and nuts about. I trust spirit to give this through an energetic transmission Mm -hmm. that'll enrich me and educate me in the way that I should go. So there's that too. That's just as powerful, if not more powerful than getting your news on social media or getting your news on some news, uh, news station or news source. Now I'd like to offer some practical, like easy to do suggestions that will help you to manage your energy. And I'm going to offer the ones I kind of always offer. And then maybe we'll see what you have to say, Tricia. But Mm -hmm. first and foremost, if you're not drinking your water, y'all, now is the time to be drinking pure water and giving your body, mind and spirit. All of these are connected. Nothing happens in your mind, y'all, that doesn't show up in your body. Nothing happens in the spirit that doesn't show up in the mind and nothing happens in the body that's not reflected and mirrored in the spirit. And so give the system of who it is that you are in this 3D reality, your body, the water that it needs because water is a conductive. It moves energy around. It allows the body to adjust and to attune and most importantly, to align back to center when it needs to without water pure water that it can utilize. It struggles to do this. It struggles to assimilate, integrate, express energy in the way that it needs to. So now more than ever, everybody should be getting half. Let me say, I know all the people in the intensive are like, oh gosh, here we go again. Half your body weight in pure water ounces plus 20 ounces. So Right now, add, add 20 more, add 40. And it doesn't matter if you pee seven times a night, it's still worth it. It is. <laughs> At least half your body weight in pure water ounces plus 20 ounces upwards towards a gallon or more like whatever you can take. It's just really important right now to stay hydrated. And along the same lines, it's important to be eating clean foods. Now, this doesn't mean we judge ourselves because we're in quarantine and I know I'm eating a pizza every now and again, okay? And I know that I'm not necessarily eating the best, but I'm also making sure I make space and time for those foods that I know actually nourish my body. So even if at night I might not be doing the best with regard to my nutrition and my eating, I make sure in the morning I'm having a juice with lots of vegetables, lots of mineralization. I'm taking my vitamins, I'm taking my enzymes, I'm taking my nutrition. Um, and I make sure I have a salad with nuts. I just make sure that I'm giving my body some fuel so that it can do what it's being asked to do right now. And of course, the foundation of the spiritual life is going to be meditation. And even if it's 45 seconds, like stop, hammer time, stop whatever you're doing and just check in with yourself. Like just we we were in Nicole Powers body scan workshop this weekend and it was really wonderful. It was such a good workshop. But just like for those of you who were in that program, like stop and scan yourself. And for everyone else, just stop and intuitively check in. Like, what do I need right now? What's my spirit asking for? What is God saying to me right now? Because it's in the stillness that we're able to hear that. But if we're not making the time, then we're not going to be hearing what we need to hear. And so meditation and prayer, now's the time to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. And this is not, um, it's not predicated on an idea of of a certain kind of God. It's not. Prayer beyond religion is powerful. You don't need religion to be powerful in your prayer. Prayer is the uttering. It is the communication of your intention. And as I always say, don't come into prayer like a beggar. Don't come into prayer begging God to give us something. No, we come into prayer as a co-creative partner with spirit, manifesting what we want for ourselves. On Monday night, we said, people perish for a lack of vision. This means what do you want to manifest? Taking time to decide what that is for you and for the planet, and then communicating that to spirit in a creative way so that it can manifest. Like That's where it's at. Anything that appears in the physical world must first be created in the energy period. 
If you want your new house in the physical world, you've got to create that intention, that desire, that idea in the energy first, in the thinking, in the visualization, in the planning, the non-tangibles. That's how this works. And so taking the time to do those things, it's, it's actually really powerful. So mm -hmm. prayer, meditation, eat a salad, please make it organic if you can. Lots and lots of water. This helps us to just move the energy around and not be so overwhelmed. But Tricia, what would you recommend for just some easy things that people can do? Well, since I talked about how we are in overload and therefore escaping and into the unconscious kind of, med of uh, hypnosis, well, meditation and prayer, as Crystal is saying, is so how we actually get out of the unconscious kind of hypnosis is to go deeper with intention into hypnosis, aka meditation or your state, and then come all the way up. So we intentionally go into meditation, um, do, do a guided meditation, go do, do one of my guided hypno journeys, whatever it is, go do your regular personal self-facilitated, however you do it, go intentionally in and that will take you deeper and then come all the way up and out and you can just wake yourself up. So in hypnosis, or if you've ever been in one of my um, group hypnosis or hypno journeys, the way that we wake ourselves up in hypnosis is one, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake and alert. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake and alert. And there's something universal about that. Even if you've never had hypnosis and you, have, you aren't conditioned to that, it's, counting yourself up is something that kind of just we all orient to it works. I was one time driving on the freeway with my husband and there was this elderly person who was having some kind of a... Uh, a, a consciousness break and she was you know banging her car into the median and stuff and she was passing out and uh, myself and another person went to go help her and I kept saying to her one two three four five eyes open wide awake and alert Angie and she'd go and it would wake her up I never she, I don't know just, it just worked it works on people and it would get her to come up almost like the smelling salts member in the olden days yeah. and then the TV shows. So you can wake yourself up. So wake yourself up after a meditation session. But if you find yourself in the anxiety, you do that with intention. It's a way to tell your mind, to tell your brain that it's time to be here with my intentional state. With, awake, not in the, the control of that message unit overload. So that's the only thing I would add really. But... Is there anything else to add? Oh, I guess body movement too. I know it's hard right now because we're really trying to stay quarantined and we probably don't have our gyms, some of us, and all that kind of thing. But if you can go on a nice brisk walk because moving the body processes energy. So in, in the way that the water is going to help us to get the systems moving, but the moving the body. So being on your movement practice and maybe kicking that up a little bit, even when you don't feel like it, just doing some kind of, or get a hula hoop. That's such a fun way to just move some energy around and you're actually moving with your chakras. <laughs> Seriously, a hula hoop is really fun. <laughs> oh, cool. I never thought of that. I got, yeah, you can get them on Amazon. There's like adult ones and oh, there's, cool. and there's ones that are like, for whatever reason, they're weighted in a way. And so they're easy to move around. And if you look up one that's like chakra hula hoop, then. Oh my God, yeah. I'm going to totally do that. You it's know, really fun. <laughs> Let me get up on Amazon and start looking for that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But those are just things we can all do. Um, and of course, paying attention to the breath, as you were discussing on Monday night, it was so eloquent, just the eye of the storm and mm -hmm. always maintaining that peaceful space within yourself. And I asked you, well, what about people who just don't feel like they can get to that? And you said, use your breath, use your breath. It's the holy breath. So just being mindful of, of your breath and taking that deep breath and feeling your body with the holy life force of that to stabilize you and to center you as well. Mm -hmm. I just want to send out a message of validation and affirmation. I think if I also want to say that because of the turmoil and the tumult in the world, you're going to start seeing things reflected in your relationships and in your job. Everything is affected by it as above, so below, as within, so without, and with so much energy impacting us, coming into us, and also so much energy being expressed by us, we must be mindful of this. We must be mindful of this. 
expect for this to show up in the different conditions and experiences of your life as well. I just want that to be almost make a positive association with it though. So when you're noticing something going on in your body, you're noticing something going on in your life, know that this is because of the energetic principles we're discussing here. And really all you have to do is bring your intention back to center and get into that peaceful space and your, your life begins to adjust around you and will start to you'll start to have that order back in your life. When you are energetically out of order, when you are energetically out of alignment, it's going to affect absolutely everything in your life. So that's your first order of business, taking care of yourself and saying no to things. Just saying, you know, nope, today I go to bed and I hang out in my warm, comfy bed and I do whatever I want. I read my book. I do whatever I want. I take care of myself today because that gives me peace. Give yourself permission to do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. I, I think something else just creeped in a little bit. And that is when you are feeling sort of, um, if you, if you're feeling like you are not able to, you feel helpless. That's the word I'm looking for. So if you're feeling helpless, if you're feeling helpless in what's going on and overwhelmed by it, then see if you can be of service to anyone in any small way at all. Even if it is like sneaking over and pulling your neighbor's trash cans up for them, even though, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's a silly thing that came to mind. And if there isn't something that you can do because you're, you know, you're minding the pandemic um, cautions, there's some things we do online. I mean, that's what I feel like right now. Crystal and I are here doing this because... <laughs> being of service can help you to get up and out of some of that overwhelm and help you to, you're contributing help and health to the world then. And we're a sea of energy. It works. And gratitude is so good too. Just take a moment before you go to sleep tonight and just be thankful that you got your babies or you got your house. You got a place that you live in. You were able to have food today. You have a car. You are blessed in so many ways. And just take a little bit of an inventory and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm blessed. Thank you, God in me. Thank you, spirit, for taking care of me. I can trust that and just feel that. That energy is so powerful and it's also directly related to manifesting more things in your life that you could be grateful for. So gratitude practice is important.